Hey, coffee and questions time. It is Wednesday. So today we are going to, I'm not going to take, uh, do questions this morning as much as I'm going to do a process of uh, packaging a big sign. I've done, um, you can go back and see video number 98 in the newsletters and I packed a big stop sign. Um, and, and most of that is absolutely still applicable, but I do something a little bit different. I packed a sign yesterday and shipped it out. It was that last resort sign that you guys saw me make on, um, I don't know, the last newsletter I think it was. So um, here's what the, the sign, um, anyway, so reference back number 98 and then also coffee and questions uh, December 1st of uh, 2015 and uh, I talk about a package and large signs on those as well. Um, but uh, you can probably see through the bubble wrap here, this is the sign that I carved on, uh, carved uh, a good portion of it on film. So go back and watch the newsletter from, uh, from last Friday. Um, but what I've done here, I want to go through kind of the process of how I packed this sign. And being as I didn't have anybody take video for me while I was packing this yesterday, I just went ahead and took, uh, took the time and took some, some shots with my phone and then printed them out. So I'm going to show you kind of the process that I go through. So this sign was, um, it was about, oh my gosh, how big was it? It was like 22 by 40 or something like that was the size of the sign. So what I did, and you can see here, the first thing that I do is I take the sign and I wrap it in plastic if it's got a finish on it. Now back on number 98 video, that stop sign didn't have a finish because the customer was going to do the finishing on this. But most of the time, my big signs, I put a finish on. So uh, the sign first, I wrap in, uh, in plastic. So we have some of this tubing that we use uh, all the time. It's a pretty heavy gauge, must be about six, seven, eight mil. And I slice this on the edge and then I wrap the sign in this tube. That's the first thing I do. Then after I get done with that, then I wrap it in bubble wrap. And you guys have seen me use this stuff before too. So that's what you're seeing right here is that sign is wrapped in plastic first and then bubble wrap. The reason I don't wrap it just in bubble wrap is because if it's got a finish on it, these, um, these bubbles, and I like to put them in on the sign, these bubbles could uh, leave a mark on the actual uh, finish because the finish takes a week or so to get super hard. So um, even though it's dry to the touch. So that's what the sign is. Now what I've done is I've taken the sign and here's another version of that. I got stuff flying all over the place. They win. So here's another angle of that sign. And you can see that it has some styrofoam around it. And I'll get to that in a second. But what I do, and here's another version at the corner. So what I do is I cut this styrofoam two inches in two inch strips. And I, uh, I skin the sign with just scrap plywood. I just had a bunch of this scrap plywood. Or you could use hardboard like I did back on number 98. You could use hardboard as, as well. But I skin it, skin the sign front and back and you'll see pictures of that here in a minute. But what I do at the corners, and that's what this shows, is I take this, this styrofoam that I had laying around, it's two inches thick, and I, uh, I put it on the corners and that's what you're seeing right here and the sign is on the inside kind of jumping all over the place but I think you get the idea this is what it uh, that's what it looks like on the corners so I make my board this these boards I make this what's the matter I'm jumping around you're jumping around way too fast I'm with sorry. the pictures well kind of maybe zoom out or something I'm trying I know. I'm trying to get all this in so um, I made my my piece is this two inches bigger all the way around. So it, it's literally two inches on both sides and both ends. So that's what I did with these. And then I put it all the way around with that. Just get rid of some of this, this stuff here. So you've seen those pictures. Here's what it looks like once it's skinned. 
Now hold it still for just okay. a minute. That's what the skin looks like, top and bottom, both the both surfaces, the front and the back. And I think you can see the styrofoam in there too, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay. I think so. You good? So here's another another shot of that. Somebody's skin. gonna get dizzy. I'm going in and in and out there. Sorry, you guys. My fault, not Vicky's. Okay. Okay, so that's so it's skin. Now you know it's skin, top and bottom, or, or both both surfaces, styrofoam all the way around. I tape it up. Now I use some of this stuff. And I have a roll of this stuff. It's 30 inches up tall. I have a roll of this stuff that comes in a big roll. That's the corrugated? That's the single face corrugated, yeah. So I have a big roll of that. This is what it looks like in the roll. I'm trying to be as as uh, accurate as I can here and not leave anything out. Okay. But if you guys have questions, you know how to get a hold of me. So I use that stuff. Now, once I've had my board, and this is a picture, I'll, I'll explain what this picture is. This is where I wrapped the one edge of it, or the one end of it, with that corrugated all the way around. And this is the set, the edge that I haven't wrapped yet. Got it? Okay, good. Just want to make sure. I don't want to move too fast for you. <laughs> All right, so then, and, and what I do is I leave it a couple inches longer on both ends. So you can see that the corrugated came past the edge of the styrofoam and my sheeting a uh, couple, uh, couple inches on both ends. Got it? Then I just kind of slice the corners. Blowing stuff around. I slice the corners and then bend it over. Like a Christmas present. Kind of like a Christmas present, exactly. I kind of slice that the corners and then bend it both ways and uh, tape it up. Okay. Okay, that's that. So this is pretty much the the whole sign after it's uh, completely wrapped in that corrugated. And don't leave out the tape. Use as much tape as you need. I, I must have used over half a roll of, of packing tape. Okay. So then the last piece is just to make sure that it's in good shape. From all four ways, I use strap tape. The fiberglass reinforced strap tape. I think it's only half inch wide. It's not real wide. But so you can see that I tape it uh, you know, all four ways. So you've got two on all four corners, you, it looks like this. Okay. So you got two of them that way on the corners and then the other way. And then I go back, and I didn't show that, but I go back and I put packing tape on top, the two inch packing tape on top of the reinforced, uh, the fiberglass reinforced strap tape. And then I'm pretty sure it's good to go. Now what I would have done had I thought about it, and I think I probably will do it on the next one. Let me uh, get back to a picture here. What I probably would have done is on the ends here. Let me see what I'm looking at here. Yeah, on the ends here, I probably would have ripped some more uh, of that sheeting and put it uh, on the outside of the styrofoam. If I was going to do anything different, that's what I might have done. I'm hoping it doesn't need it. I think I packed it pretty well. But anyway, again, guys, uh, you know, my philosophy on packing is uh, if you're going to error, error on the side of overpacking. This is a $600 sign. Last thing I want to do is have it, and it's going to New York, so it's going a long ways away. I didn't want it to, want it breaking halfway through. Even though I insured it, I just don't want to take a chance. So I don't want my customer to get a broken sign. So I'm pretty sure that I packed it, uh, packed it well enough. Um, so if you have any questions, uh, again, you can refer back to number 98. And I talked about it again on December 1st, Coffee and Questions of uh, 2015. Um, what am I leaving out, babe? Sign covers of the day. That's what I'm leaving out. Sign covers of the day. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So I have two sign covers of the day. First one is... My buddy back in, uh, where, is, where is Scott? Is he down in Alabama? He's down in the south. Scott Bradford, his first big commercial sign came out really good. And this has been a while back. You guys know I have a large stack of uh, sign carvers of the day. So if I don't get to you 
close to when you send me pictures, uh, understand it kind of goes at the back of the, generally it goes at the back of the stack and then I work my way through. So um, anyway, great job, my friend. Scott, you did a good, good job there. He's doing well. Uh, and then we've got second sign card of the day. Dave and Eric, they're sign makers. Go figure. Dave and Eric Stover, they're sign makers. I can't remember. I've talked to Dave on the phone, I believe. I can't remember exactly where they're at. Um, they're here in the States somewhere. But, uh, yeah, Dave and Eric, and they own a sign company. How cool is that? So Nice. That's pretty. Yeah, they did a great job on that. So they got into car, uh, carbon signs through our YouTube videos, which is uh, really cool. Very, very cool. So I'll gather all my stuff here. All right. So uh, that is it. We are done for the day. Uh, don't forget, Las Vegas uh, seminar is coming up in October. So if you have any questions on that, again, I'm trying to work on getting a page up for it with all of the, all of the details. I'll, uh, I'll get on it get to it so let me know if you have any questions anything i can answer for you you know how to get a hold of us uh, oh by the way i got a great shout out i just posted on facebook a little while ago a great shout out from lunkers tv uh rob over there at lunkers tv gave me a great shout out so check out his channel uh terrific bass fishing channel uh he's gonna be big so uh thanks rob i appreciate it and uh got some more uh, influencers and shout outs coming up. So everybody have a great week. We'll see you on, got something really special on Friday. I'm going to be carving some new material that I've never carved before. So I'm really looking forward to it. So uh, we'll see you on Friday's newsletter. Everybody have a great day. Dad's thought of the day coming up right now. See you later. Thanks guys. Bye bye. Hi folks. Dave here with a thought for today. And I've had questions about finances and how to be financially independent. Well, if you're not financially independent by the time you're 40 or 50, uh, it's not because you, you live in the wrong country or you live at the wrong time <clears> or <throat> circumstances are, aren't right. It's simply because you don't have the right plan. Now, I didn't say wealthy. I said financially independent. It means you have enough money to do what you need to have done. Not that you have enough money to do anything you want to do, but to have the money that you have to do the things that you need. That's financial independence. And if you don't have it by the time you're 40, 50 at the most, then your plan is wrong. Change your plan. That's my thought for today. <laughs>